Because I know I'm doing my job right when I do that, you see. Look at the way I handle Ricky Steamboat. You know, a fluke is one thing. But when I drop somebody on the floor, or I drop them in the ring, they don't get up. One simple move, it takes a split second to do DDT. That's what it's called. And I'm not afraid of anybody. Nobody. You bring on George Steele if you want to. You bring on a Tito Santana if you want to. You bring on anybody you want. Coco, beware. Frankie, beware. That bird he comes around with. What a silly little thing that is. You bring Frankie, beware, around that snake, my man, and Frankie be gone soon. That's the kind of guy I am. I'm the kind of guy right now, if I needed to sneeze, I'd use your hand. <laughs> That's the kind of guy I am. So it doesn't matter to me if I'm going to be wrestling George Steele, or I wouldn't even mind crossing the fence because I have no friends in this business. This is a business to me. I take it as a business. And it's serious business. And I'm talking about perhaps becoming a champion. May I inquire as to uh, which perhaps championship belt you have your sights on? Let's just say the Intercontinental Championship is on my mind. And the reason it is is because once you have that, then Hogan is right there. You've got him any time you want. So macho man. Just something to think about, my man. Could you handle a snake? <laughs> I don't know why. Could you? We had, we had, we had, we had a whole lot of superstars on this stage here tonight. But I want y'all to know one thing. This is my house. And when I say who's a vote attack skills and vocabulary too. All the hits in the distance. It's all brand new. You're through. I'm interplanetary and like Doctor Who. So who? Fuck your beef. No relief. I step on stage. Girls scream like I'm Keith. So when you get to the month of October and you realize we eight days deep, but already have produced three shows. Ringtime Pro Wrestling is giving you a lot of wrestling content for the airwaves and for the podcast streets. Keith the key share to build it again. Keith should say hi to the people. What up, though? Hey. What's happening, people? <laughs> okay, I'm on that stuff. Let me calm down. I'm good. Now, when you say you on that stuff, I need you to be clear because I'm an 80s kid, and when old people said you was on that stuff... There was a very specific connotation that went along with that, Keisha. Man, now, look. As your brother, I'm concerned now. Uh, you, you know what? Said. Don't be, Keith. I'm good. Trust and believe. I'm fine, people. Keith is not doing anything other than eating, sleeping, working, and running around like crazy. So, by the way, random thought, random advertisement. Krispy Kreme has salted caramel donuts. People. Please go get you one. Uh, for those of you that don't have a Krispy Kreme, I don't. I'm sorry. I I feel for you because Krispy Kreme now day. owes Ringtime Pro Wrestling fifteen dollars. Uh, you can get <laughs> right. to my PayPal. I will direct you towards That's PayPal. Like, oh my God! Talk to this. It's filled with saucy caramel cream, man. If you don't stop it, okay. All right, that was enough. Okay, okay. But yeah, we, we've had a wonderful week of wrestling. Uh, we go rock it Sunday to Wednesday. And that'll get you guys caught up to where we're at. Um, I know this show's going to come out probably Friday morning, Thursday night. Haven't watched SmackDown. Don't really know how that's going to work out. I haven't watched the most recent TNA show. Which I should have. Should have watched the most recent one last night, but I didn't. Because I was watching NXT TakeOver. Which mm. was amazing. You know, I watched it twice last night because I nodded out a little bit towards, you know, in the middle of the first one. Right. Watched mm-hmm. Table for Three. Oh, then oh my God. Table for went Three. Ahead, went ahead and watched it over again. And, man, beginning to end, very cohesive, very solid. Uh, Triple H really knows how to run a wrestling promotion. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not gonna spoil Takeover because that's the end of the show talk. But man, Keisha was a G, so I didn't shed a tear. But they they tugged at my emotions. Yeah, they tugged at my emotions. That one. 
But let's go. Let's start the week. Uh, Bow for Glory, Sunday. TNA statement pay per view. Mm-hmm. I'll say this, Keith. <coughs> Hadn't watched a lot of TNA this year. Be fair. Peeked in on it. Take a look at it. And I'm going to tell you why I have a love-hate relationship with TNA. And I feel like I'm about to go down this road again one more time. When it starts getting good to me, they find a way to mess it up. You remember the main event, Mafia? You remember World Elite? Yeah. Remember when it, it was just total chaos every week? Total faction wars? Right. You remember when AJ Styles and Kurt Angle put together some five-star matches? Oh, yeah. Of course. It all went to shit. It all went to shit. Um, remember when Aces and Eights got popping? When they first stormed on the scene and was wrecking people? Yeah. Definitely. Then it all went to shit. So... I just say that I have my reservations about TNA, right? Right. That being said, I watched Bound for Glory. Very good show. B plus show. And I know some people think that's kind of high in my grading system. Good show, man. I thought it was energetic. I thought it kept a nice pace. I'm not going to go deep into the show, but I'm going to go over some decent matches for you. The ones that I like. Mm-hmm. Ultimate X open up the show. Uh, Tigre- Tigre Uno retains this title in a good back and forth match. Um, I don't like Manic no more. Like I, But here's the thing. I realize I will never like Manic. Ever. What they did to suicide totally ruined it for me. Yeah, true. That is true. <laughs> if they would have just left suicide alone and let that still be a character that could come in and out of the picture whenever they wanted him to, right? I would have rolled. But no, no, they didn't want to do that. They just had to bring him out there and be like, "Hey, so uh, like real thing." <sighs> You did not need to do all of that extra. That was really unnecessary. Thank you for ruining one of probably a lot of people's favorite characters on the show. It's just awful. Just awful. Um, Tyrus wins the number one contenders match. AKA Brodus Clay, somebody calls his mama. <laughs> now, if it gets very complicated though, because EC3. I mean, you can go after any title after you win this match. Any title in the cup. He says he wants to be world champ. But he worked for EC3. All right. How's that going to work out? Exactly. But he says he's still going to be loyal to EC3. So we'll see how that works out. That makes sense. Nice way to play with the storyline. Um, Bobby Roode defeated Bobby Lashley for the King of the Mountain title. Mm. Not- um, I almost wanted to get this match of the night. <coughs> oh boy, excuse me. God, would we'll, we'll get all throaty. What I gotta do a podcast? I hate that. This is probably why I can't do professional radio because, like, when it's time to do a show, I'm like, oh, God. I'm drinking a ton of water. But let's have from that. Very, very good match. Very good match. Um. A lot of back and forth. Um, I thought Lashley had Rude at a couple of spots. Bobby Rude never said die. That that guy. I think the WWE missed the boat on both of those guys. They missed the boat on Lashley when they had him. And never trying to bring in Bobby Rude. Oh, man. Incredible match. Um, Earl Hebner got his shine. They, um, you know, showed some of the... The events from the night before with his Hall of Fame induction. And they did a nice video package for him. Um, Like I said, very deserving guy for the Hall of Fame. Uh, Guy who should be in the WWE Hall of Fame. And I think the WWE also should make sure that they honor refs. 
Right. They've put announcers in, and deservedly so, like J.R. King, stuff like that. But Finkel, I think, is in the Hall of Fame. You got to get some of these refs in. People who put in a lot of time, been at the top, been at a lot of angles. Earl and Dave Hepner probably should go in. Um, Nick Patrick from WCW probably would go in if he was up to me. Um, Jimmy Corderas would go in if it was up to me. 20 years in the game. You can't knock that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Also, um, after that, Gail Kim took on Awesome Kong in one of the quintessential knockouts matches of all time. I mean, it's one of those, like, these two ladies could arguably be one, both of the greatest knockouts of all time, even though I give Gail Kim a slight edge. Gail brought it. Uh, her husband, celebrity chef Robert Irvine, was there arguing with Earl to add a little element to the match. Um, that dude is Jack too, man. Like I, I might need to stop flirting with Gail Kim over this social media, cause that dude, boy, he is jacked up, and he be playing with them knives, cause he be cooking all the time. You don't want them kind of problems. Those kind of problems you do not want. Of course not, not at all. Uh, but yeah, very, very, very solid show. Uh, very solid match. Um, Gail guts it out in the end. Very classic. Uh, Kurt Angle defeated Eric Young in a no DQ match. I really didn't like it, Keish. I really didn't. I felt like Kurt looked old. Like there was moments where he had brilliance, but then there were some moments. And I know part of it was they had to make it so like he was hurt and he was going out. And this or whatever, and they had to establish EY as a bad dude, but right. it just I, I could connect all the dots for me. Also, I kind of they've done so much with Eric Young. Like I sometimes I can't if you haven't dialed in. Maybe if I've watched it for like a year, it'd be like, oh wow, yeah, maybe I, they've built him up. But I I don't really rem- like I don't have him in my head like that. Yeah. Like, you're the Animal Planet dude for me. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not... And that's nothing against Eric Young, but I don't have him as this dangerous, he's gonna kill you guy. You know what I mean? I, I've met Eric Young. You know what I mean? Like, no. I don't I don't, I don't. don't buy it. You know what I mean? But it's personal. I don't, I, I don't... I don't get the connection. Like, with Kurt, I'm legit scared of Kurt. Kurt healthy, I, I don't want no parts of Kurt. Right. And I mean healthy, I mean like can move. Like I gotta know that knee is totally shot and I can kick him in it. That's <laughs> I don't want no parts of Kurt. All right. Exactly. Kurt stepped off with that broken neck in one of the Olympics. I, I don't want no problems with Kurt. No, I'm good on it. Like it's funny because on that fact alone, I'm like <laughs> Who I didn't know. Uh-uh. But when it comes to Kurt, you just want to be like, yeah, I take the L for this one. I'm looking at this. <laughs> I'm in this though. It's crazy. It's crazy. But hey, it's crazy. Yeah. Um. Aside from that, I would see the main event. Matt Hardy, Drew Galloway, both challenger EC3 for the TNA world title. Triple threat match. And uh, Keish, I neglected to mention in the last show, uh, they got a special guest referee for the match. Jeff Hardy. Mm. Uh, good match. I thought they told a nice story. Drew cut a hell of a promo before the match. Went a little far. Because he said he'd die in the ring. And I'm always kind of weary when people talk about they'll put their life on the line in professional wrestling. Because uh, yeah, it ain't that serious. <laughs> no. I get you selling something, but man, it ain't that serious. I'm not trying to die anywhere. Uh, exactly. Uh, like, no, I'm good. You don't I, be. I'm good. You know, I, 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 my, my dream was always to play in the NFL, Keish, right? 
I'm not dying to play in the Super Bowl. <laughs> right. Well, the thing is, if you I'm, do die, it's yo, like fuck, if, if, fuck if, that. If, if 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 you do die, then uh, how exactly are you going to achieve these dreams? I just want to know. Like, you know that whole like, oh, I could die happy. No. Exactly. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Man, look, I'm hanging on to this shit as long as I can. Period. <laughs> no, right. so, I'm hanging. Look, I want to be like my wife's granddad. That dude is 96 and just strolling around. That's where I want to be. Right. I want to be. I want to be 96 and hard to deal with. I want people to be like, oh, that 96 year old man a doozy. Cause I'm, I, that's where you can say whatever you want, and people will just be like, "Yeah, he's ninety six. Like you just, you just gotta let it go. And that's it. Yeah, you can't gotta do. let it go. Oh man, and think about it. My dream is when I'm in my nineties that technology is advanced, so it I won't even lose my car keys because the cars are drive for us until Skynet takes over the machines, turn on us. But prior to that, it's gonna be fun. You ain't got no sense, Keith. Like, I don't deal with you. I still don't. Okay, but let's get back to this match. Uh, very good match. Everybody got their stuff in. I thought EC3 healed it up. He did a good job. Uh, Jeff Hardy called it down the middle. It wasn't obvious. I thought Matt had a nice trick at the beginning of the match. I, I mean, was, everything looked how it should look. Unfortunately, uh, EC3 decided to be into a little bracer with the referee. I thought, I think he was dumb enough to think he could get himself disqualified in a triple threat match. So he was trying to be, and he got, he went too far with Jeff, and messed around and got a twist of fate for his troubles. And then next day, though, know, Matt Hardy went in and did his thing, and boom, boom, bam, surprise. Matt Hardy walks out as the world champ. All right. The guy I said had no chance of winning the title walks out with the world title. Exactly. I thought it was Drew Knight. Honestly, uh, EC3 maybe could have squeaked out without, you know. No. Uh, EC3 left. Bad. Cussed everybody out. Cussed out Dixon Carter, his IT. He was upset. So, I don't know how that plays out Wednesday. I'll probably watch that show. Who when will I watch it? I guess Keith, I'm loading up my weekend. Yeah, Keith, be... you are. I don't know Keith. Uh, my weekend is gonna be rough. Okay, I gotta work two days, which is great because when I work on the weekends is when I catch up on stuff. I can't get No, I'm serious. This is what I do. Like I, I flip up, I flip up the, the tablet and I get caught up, right? So I miss Arrow and I miss Flash this week. So both of those are on the docket. Right? I don't know if I'll have a chance to get back into Gotham or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Don't know if those shows will make it. But I gotta watch Flash and I gotta watch Arrow. I gotta stick with those. Okay. Now, I'm two episodes behind the Empire. Don't know if I really want to get back in. Well, the thing is, uh, personal opinion, uh, Empire this season is not as good as it was last season. I mean, Last last night's episode was whew, honey, mm. but it it just isn't as good as it once was before. So, but so, I I would say watch it. Just watch it for your own self. Okay, mind you, I gotta do it early because Keish football is on Saturday and Sunday. I can't be missing football for this shit. So, and I mind you. I haven't written my Georgia football preview for Cadillac like Sports yet, which probably have to do tomorrow. Um, I, I don't know. I got a lot. And I got to get ready for uh, New Japan on Sunday, going into Monday morning. Too much going on. Way too much going on. Don't know if I'm going to ever get caught up on this television. Maybe one weekend where there's slow football, I can power through a few episodes or something. Maybe tonight when I'm doing the edits, I, I can throw up something on demand. I don't know. Which, Keish, crazy Thursday night television slate. I know, right? 
college football everywhere. Hockey just started back up. Baseball's in the playoffs. Shit, NBA preseason. And you got your Thursday night NFL game. Right. What can I do? You know what? You're going to have to make a decision. And there ain't no flipping coins. And there you look. Have you watched have to down. work it out. Have watched SmackDown or Impact. Keisha, I'm in trouble. I'm in TV hell. I don't have enough hours. I need a GoFundMe so I can stop working and watch television. So you guys can get to work. I'll even blog about it. I'll, I'll, I'll make video blogs. I'll do everything. I just need some time to get caught up on this television. That's what I need. But that, that's that's neither here nor there. I'm 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 going way off tangent. Um, but that's that was Sunday. Flip it over. We have Raw. Uh, and I guess right now it'd be time for a break. I guess nah nah. Let's pile through. So we got Raw. We're shaping up hell in the cell as I see it. Right. Right. Um, I thought it ended well as a show, and there's some very good high points. So I'm just gonna hit the high points, right? Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Orton look like a well-oiled machine against the Wyatt family. Yeah. Now, I I don't know where this goes. Somebody has to lose a hell in a cell, and there has to be a definitive loser. Right. It does, because it needs to be over. Um, this needs to come to an end, or it needs to have, like, the biggest cliffhanger ever. So, a Hell in a Cell, it does need to be, a, it just needs to be somebody that takes this at the top. I mean, you can always come back to it later, let it be with most views, but... For right now, like it just needs to come down to a crushing it. The thing is, I think they're they're at a, a point of they don't know what to do as the next thing moves on, right? Right. There are six guys tied up in this feud that we don't know where they go after it, right? Right. Here's the thing. Essentially, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and Randy Orton go their separate ways. By the coincidentally, it ended up with something happening between Dean Ambrose and Randy Orton. Who knows, right? Exactly. And then, then we have a few there. The Wyatts are going to grow as a group. There will be a collective, and it be about Bray, and Bray will set his sights on the next thing. Um. Roman will float in the wind. They got to find something for him. I still think they believe that he is the man. He's the man of the future. So, that being said, there's got to be something that's big for him after this. But, it probably won't be the world title. Or it could. He could be one of Seth's next. I mean, I don't think him and Roman had a real out-out thing. Right. So, Kane is filling the gap now. Uh, Brock going to do Hell in a Cell with Taker. After that, Brock's going on hiatus again. Of so, course. We got to fill a few months before Brock come back. So, I don't know how that works out. Maybe Sheamus is a guy, right? But, we got to deal with Seth. So, I don't know. Um, I see uh, Natty look good in a one-on-one match against Paige. Got her in that sharpshooter. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So she's awesome back. Match. It was great seeing that, personally. I, I miss Natty. I don't know if anybody else. I miss Natty. Oh, it was just so great. Sorry, I had to have a moment. Cause Paige gets on my nerves. I mean, if you really want me to be technical, oh, oh honey, she got on my nerves. So I like Paige. I just think she's the got a little too 
total diva for the situation. Yeah, it is to a point where she, well, in my opinion, she's just become more annoying than she already was. You <laughs> know, that's my personal opinion. Like, it's just amplified now. And I think she's just playing a little bit more into it than it needs to be. Right, Sage? I think you can just withdraw back on that. Thank you. Because it, it's just, I, personally, I just think she's just cocky. Like, she's cocky and she's arrogant and she's just, she does too much. Like, on a regular day, she does too much. So, it's just annoying, you know? Like, it's a difference between I have this confidence and I'm good and, you know, all this other kind of stuff. And it's just kind of like, yeah, I'm just that it, girl. No, Paige, sit down. <laughs> like, have several seats so you really get on my nerves. I'm sorry. Female attitude coming out a little bit. Need to drop back on that. Okay. But, uh, thought that was out. Rusev make a demand of Summer Rae after she makes him an offer. Mm. Uh, very, very weird scenario there. Uh, I guess that will finally finalize his way out. And we'll get some end results there. Uh, Kane and Seth Rollins are going to have their issue at Hell in a Cell. And they're going to have shit. There it out for the world title. Mm. 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 Um, Stephanie McMahon said Monster Kane gets to face Seth Rollins for the world title. If Monster Kane loses, Corporate Kane loses his job as director of operations. But if he does it, then Monster Kane will be world champ, and I guess Corporate Kane still has a job. Mm. Seth is in a very weird spot here. Um, Corporate Kane was his tag team partner that night and tried to help him out. Right. You know, I guess the Dudleys um, didn't work out that well, but you know, things happen. Of course. Um, so, with that being said, um, I like this. And I've said it before. I said, yeah, I like this. Don't know why I like it. And maybe because it's different. And watching Schizophrenic Kane. Glenn Jacobs is one of the greatest guys to ever do this thing in the WWE. Right? Right. Definitely Hall of Famer. But just to go schizophrenic and play the... Oh, no. I mean, Seth, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm just here to be a good guy and work for the team. Man, this dude is great. Of course. Great. He is killing his Jekyll and Hyde thing. But, that being said, uh, Big E accept John Cena's open challenge. And I was rooting for New Day. He's again. Oh, yeah. And I thought Big E had a legit shot at beating Cena for that, in that US, in that open challenge. Right. And, what ends up happening, it breaks down, the new day of jumping Cena. Even though it's always fun because I like when Xavier's outside the ring with the trombone, the guy's hilarious. Um, the Dudleys came down and got their ass whooped. Um, mind you, Dolph Ziggler was beat up before the match because I think he was going to accept the open challenge, but they showed him getting whooped up and the new day brought him out, dragged him outside. Uh, long story short, Raw ends in Carnage and the New Day is standing tall with four dudes just laid out. Yeah, that's what got me. I was just I like, loved it. whoa. I'm like, give me more of this. Please, add more, put more soup in the bowl. This is what I want to see. Exactly. Because Lord knows, we don't see it much. Like, they added some spice to the show. Yes, I, I use it. That's put more soup in the bowl. Don't know where that comes from. I guess that's a key system now. But I'm just saying, Keish, we can build on this. This could go somewhere. And hypothetically, let's say Cena is taking a leave of absence. I wouldn't mind Biggie beating Cena for the U.S. title. 
and the New Day are the U.S. Tag Team Champions. And they, all three, are recognized for all the belts, and the titles are fluid. Anybody can defend any combination of belts how they choose. Xavier and Kofi can defend the tag titles, and Big E will be defending U.S. Or Kofi will take the U.S. title out there, former U.S. champion, defend it, while Big E and Xavier defend the tag team belts. You know, now how it's coming at you. Exactly. Maybe Big E got to do double duty one night, defend the U.S. title and the tag title. I don't care. I just want to see it. I just exactly. want to see somebody try it. Why not? Right? Because as they always describe it, it's not, you know, oh, he's going to be the U.S. champ. It's like, hey, we are going to be the U.S. champ. <laughs> That's it. They will be U.S. champions. It's just, that's just how it goes. Like, they don't ever consider themselves to be just one. They're a unit. And as a unit, one person's goal is everybody's goal. So, of course. They are going to treat it as such. Hey, that's our U.S. title. Hey, those are our tag team champions. You know, like, it, this is how it goes. So, I love the New Day for it. And personally, I think that most factions, if not all factions, should act in this fashion. Just to give it just a little bit of an interesting shake-up to what could happen in one night. You know, I, I think it would be greatness. Because you never know who you're going to get and how this is going to go. So, toss up in the fashion of business and wrestling and everything that is greatness and gold. I, I can't. I just can't. I can't take it in. <sighs> Release. <laughs> okay, that's me talking crazy. Let me go. Let me go. All right. No problem. No problem. Um, other than that, that's it for the first two days of this week. We will hit our break. Yes. And we will come back and we will talk of the news. We will talk birthdays and we will talk NXT takeover. Of course. Takeover. The break's over. Guy MC. Jehovah. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. I, I I had a moment. But uh with that man we'll be back and we'll talk some more wrestling, man. We'll be back. Hey. Oh, yes. Uh Kazro Vasari, Sheikh Kalahani, the Iron Sheik. You you've heard have you ever heard the expression man speak with forked tongue? You know, Jin Min, you're an intelligent American, Thank you've you. been in the library, you read about a lot of different countries, a lot of different athletic. I just want to ask you a very simple question. I don't care you are Jew American or I don't care you are all American boy, but I'd like to ask you a very simple question. Sure, go right Can ahead. you tell me very random and Mac Rotondo, what can a Pan American been, what Olympic been, what the AAU been, uh, what the, the what, what, what international compete they had? Can you tell me anyone? Well, I would have to go back to the library to check that out and go back to the record. What do you mean you have to go to the library? You want to tell me? Are you dumb? Are you a fool? Mark Rotondo, Barry Vandom, every intelligent American know, just like my manager, Mr. Blasi, said, referee that Uncle Rufus was your cousin or whatever. That's because you're cheating us. No, you don't believe the uh, Mr. Velassi, you don't believe the Nikola Volkov. I'm sure you believe Mark Rotondo. You believe uh, Barry Vandom. For sure you are another all-American Jew man. I thank you very much. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Boo, bam, surprise. We're back. Not really a surprise, because you knew he was coming back on the second half of the show. Up is the birthday segment. Birthday! Let's go down the line. Yesterday was October 7th. Big day of birthdays down at NXT. Rhino celebrated a birthday. The big gore man turned 40. Uh, Caitlyn, former WWE diva, uh, celebrated a birthday. She turned 29. Aiden English, one half of the Vaudevillians, turned 28 yesterday. Uh, today, 
Former WWE superstar Paul Burchill celebrated a birthday. And current WWE superstar, former world champion, former Tough Enough reality show guy, The Miz celebrated his birthday. The Miz turned 35. Um, rolling forward tomorrow, uh, Stevie Richards will celebrate a birthday. Do you know Stevie Richards works out at my gym? What? Yeah. Steve Richards and Scott Hall. See them both there. Stop playing. Did want to invade their space. Spoke to both of them casually, but didn't want to get to it. No interview request. I wasn't doing that while they was at the gym. Oh, of course. Didn't want to come off like too much of a mark. But if I see him again and we develop a rapport and they ask what I do, maybe I'll mention I have a wrestling podcast. <laughs> you ain't got no sense. But, uh... But- What's going on? Hey, yeah, so. Also, tomorrow, uh, we celebrate the birthday of the late, great Eddie Guerrero. Uh, Eddie would have been 48 uh, this week. So, you know, something that goes on. Uh, Incredible, man. One of the greatest of all time. One of my favorites. And uh, that's it, man. That knocks out the birthdays. So let's get into the news. All right. All right, Keish. I told you that uh, EC3 lost the title to Matt Hardy Sunday. Well, on Tuesday, press release from Matt Hardy. He is relinquishing the TNA heavyweight title. Really? Yeah, apparently, EC3 filed a legal injunction against TNA, and it was going to tie up the title. It was going to tie up Matt Hardy. Nobody can wrestle. Nobody can do anything. But my Matt Hardy relinquishing the title. It frees everything up, and he will come back and try to fight for it again. Uh, I haven't watched Impact yesterday, so I can't tell you how it's all going to work out. But we'll have more on that next week, right? Right. Oh man, that's crazy. But uh, also in the news this week, Bill Apter, uh, legendary wrestling journalist, uh, probably behind Dave Meltzer and Wade Keller, somewhere in that era. And so we're in that group are, you know, the most renowned journalists in the professional wrestling business. Uh, offered his theories on the Ben Wad uh, murders. He was on Jericho's podcast this week and said that uh, his speculation was that it maybe was a mob style hit. Maybe Nancy and like Chris got involved in the wrong people. Nancy and Daniel were killed when he got there. And then they killed him and made a professional hit man, made it look like a suicide. What? That's his theory. Uh, Jericho didn't really co-sign that. Jericho said he thought it was more had to do with the concussion stuff. Because a lot, both of them were convinced that yeah, it didn't make sense when he killed Daniel. They knew him and Nancy have volatile things and things happen between them. But he adored the kid, so why would he kill the kid? But um, I wouldn't stir this up. It's kind of weird. I just thought when he put it out there. I think he knew it was going to get a lot of headlines. Uh, nah, Keish, I'm going to go with the man snapped. Could have been a concussion thing. We now know with CTE, it does crazy things. It's crazy to a lot of people. Right. And it could have been that. I'm more inclined to believe it. The th- truth is, none of us would never know what happened. That was two, three nights right. in Fayetteville, Georgia. And I... <laughs> I, I don't I don't know what, what he expected by, but I mean maybe he just wants to offer his opinion, right? Well, I mean that's the first, on... I think that's the first time I've heard somebody giving a separate scenario to what actually happened. You know, so to me it's kind of it's crazy. It's almost far fetched because it's kind of you're listening to it and you're just like really do like it's funny because most people just kind of like really are you serious like 
you you're serious right now. Okay, shut up. Like it's <laughs> like you just wanna you wanna reject it, but it's really just another perspective of what possibly could have happened. But then it also just sounds far fetched. It really just sounds ridiculous when you think about it. So it's just kinda like, okay, you know, whatever. Um I personally wouldn't believe it. Um that would there would have to be like hardcore evidence that this is how what happened and this is the truth for me to even take that in. I mean, the fact that he did do go through multiple concussions and he had his uh the steroid issue, drugs issues, and all that. That makes sense to me as to why this happened. You know, like, what drove him to do the things that he did. I understand that completely. I'm not saying it is excusable, but at the same time, it, it gives you an understand, a great understanding of what led to these events. No, as you, as you have said before, no one will really know what exactly happened within those two to three days or whatnot, but all you can do is really speculate. And but this this is like it's a whole new level of speculation. So kinda have to just withdraw from that one. Like, nah dude. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. But anything else is kinda acceptable. Right. Um, so from that, in the news, uh, Gutter uh, talks about trying to get to the WWE and being interested in the WWE. Um, I guess he's been in talks so as people in talks, so be on the look for out for that down the pike. Uh, speaking of WWE, uh, there's rumors that Patrick from Tough Enough got signed to a developmental deal. Uh, in his official social media, he said those are rumors, and you know, things are happening. Of course, but if he was, if he did, of course, he's not going to say it. I mean, we all know that if we want to be a surprise, and you know, and all that kind of stuff. Like, he's not really going to actually come out and say it if that's the case. I would hope not. You know. Just to keep everything under wraps, because people just talk too much. Um. Also, down at NXT, um, last, last week in Nashville, people said James Storm was there, but he said he wasn't there. He was at a bar, but uh, apparently he was at Takeover. There's people showing pictures of him going into the the full sale on the day. It was hanging out backstage, and uh, he been on Twitter. Making some veiled references and jokes, you know what I mean? But uh, he been spotted there a few times. And photos already surfacing around. So we'll see what happens, man. Maybe James Storm, the cowboy, is up at NXT. I think they can use him. And I think people can learn a lot from him. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, Triple H talks about Evolve in a, in a, in a news conference. Uh, he was asked about Evolve Wrestling, which is part of WWE uh, Live Network, which also is part of Dragon Gate USA and Shine and a few other things. Oh, and uh, Game Go Kill Me. What other promotion that he does with that? But anyway, they do a lot of wrestling in the Florida area, stuff like that. And Triple H talked about their relationship and how he likes how Gabe trades the guys up and how he books the guys and their style of wrestling and says he sees them definitely as a developmental territory like a place where guys can get started prior to coming to NXT right and he sent guys down there to Gabe when they didn't have time or couldn't work on them or before NXT was going to, to get them up to speed Keish this relationship is very interesting because I think they wanted a relationship with ROH, but ROH did the toy thing and it got all muddy. And I think they can't stay at ROH now. So despite ROH, because they get a lot of same talent through Evolve, I think they're going to start using Evolve as like a B territory to NXT. 
and use them to work guys, get guys going, and get in front of an audience and that kind of thing. So it'd be interesting to watch out for. Definitely. Also, uh, Triple H made a comment about Divas in the WWE. He said Rome wasn't built in the day. Hmm. I guess somebody asked him about the Iron Woman match and stuff like that. And he basically said, look, it will be. There's a saying, Rome wasn't built in the day. These women won't be denied. Right. Take it, not give it. Because somebody asked him about, you know, when will the main roster look similar to NXT? And basically, he was trying to get it there. I mean, wouldn't that be the point? Yeah. That's, that's just my crazy opinion, but wouldn't that be the point? Eventually, the wrestlers from NXT would be migrated into the main roster, so they'll be a part of the main roster, and then you'll have some of the wrestlers that's in the main roster that's been there for like years, years, and years. Eventually, they'll you know migrate in out at some point. Like you don't wrestle forever, like <laughs> so. Um, of course, at some point, that would be the main goal is for everybody that's in the it, that's a part of the NXT world ends up moving into the main roster and on TV and you know while on SmackDown and all that kind of stuff. That's eventually what ends up happening. Is like they it looks like NXT because it is NXT, but they're no longer NXT. It's main. It's the uh, WWE superstars. That's just how it goes. Right. Um, with that being said, let's go to NXT TakeOver. Last night, Full Sail University. Bananas. Two hours, very solid, straight to the point. Uh, let's hit the highlights, Keish. Uh, we have our tag team semifinals. Samoa Joe and Finn Baylor took over the mechanics. Um, uh, mechanics fought hard, but they made short work of them. Finn Baylor may have injured his knee in the match, but it did slow him down. And Samoa Joe and Finn Baylor uh, advance. And I thought it was a good match to open up the show. I thought it got everybody excited. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, the second match was a little shock to me. Bear Corbin and Rhino defeated Jason Jordan and Chad Gable. Oh, oh man. Oh, I did not see that one coming. I swear I didn't. I thought the Young Bucks would go make it to the finals with a shot to win it. Like, I, I really gave them my shot to win, but I thought also, you know, the the team with the beta vitters were, were the guys who probably w- would take it. But, hey, man, they look good in that match against Corbett and Rhino. Right. And Jason Jordan had some fire, which... If they're going to be heels, I don't know if I would keep booking that like that because it's kind of like he had like a baby face comeback where he was just going on all cylinders, got the hot tag, and was taking everybody out. Unless you're going to book where they break up soon and yeah. he goes on his own. And, you know what I mean? So that was the thing. But all in all, I thought it was a solid match. Um, and But Corbin and Rhino advanced. Uh, Asuka had her debut against Dana Brooke and won. What did you think of her first initial match in the WWE? I thought it was awesome. Personally, I thought it was greatness. Um, I couldn't help but to be intrigued by the whole situation. Uh, I thought that, that the match, like, it there's more to come. Personally, there's more to come, and I can't wait to see the rest of it. You know? So, it, it's just, it's, I guess I'm just, it's hard to find a word to really describe, like, how a person's first match is supposed to go, because it's not necessarily her first match, and it's definitely not the first time we've seen her work. So, it's different. But, it's great to see her in a WWE ring. Right? So I definitely have to say that much about it. Right. Um, I thought she had a lot of... Her style was very strong, too. Like, those kicks were stiff. 
Like she really was breaking it. I was like, whoo, this is go up the intensity of this division. Cause she she can hit. Like that like that hurt. But uh very solid debut. One of the best debuts I think they've had. Um uh, kind of funny, WWE is making a full raise into Japan. Also, what I forgot to mention into the, the news, Keish. New Japan, the pay per view. Uh, King of the World that's going to be coming on you know Sunday night into Monday morning right on New Japan World going to be broadcast in English mm. first time ever they're going to do to put English commentary on New Japan World that's huge they're really trying to make that push into the United States market which is awesome because now you don't have to, like, just sit there and watch and not know, like, what they're saying. Of course, you know what's going on because you see the action, but at least now you get words to go with it. That you can New Japan. New Japan was good enough in Japanese. But to have English commentary, I think it's going to be awesome. Mind you, they're making that, they, you know, their inroads into America. It's like WWE trying to make their inroads into Japan. The Dale, Tommy... Now, Oscar, they really try to, I think, push their stuff over on the other side. So, this it'll be interesting to see how this works out, if they work together, or how that all comes, or if they end up becoming competitors. You know what I mean? Because New Japan ain't scared of WWE, in that sense. Right. Um, Apollo Crews defeated Tyler Breeze, which, you know, had to happen. Apollo gonna be but, on a roll, then we'll see how it works out. But that match was incredible. Yeah. Right. No, Tyler Breeze held us on. Tyler Breeze, I think, is an interesting case. Like, I think he might be a guy that stays in NXT for a while to help the other guys as opposed to take his time. I don't think he's a guy who fits on the main roster anyway. Right. Like, he looks like a baby Ziggler. So, I don't know if he would go to the main roster because he'd be like a baby Ziggler. Right. He's already a small guy. So I think that this is why they probably keep him in NXT for a while. But I think he does a good job for NXT and helping those guys get along. Um, so Samoa Joe and Finn Balor defeat Corbin and Rhino to win the Dusty Classic. Uh, very good, very emotional win. Uh, yeah. Dusty's kids came out with their wives and the grandkids. It was really a big deal. Of course. So I thought that was awesome. But to our main event. Oh, boy. Jesus. 30-minute Iron Man match. Keisha watched this match three times in the last night. I watched it twice on the play and a replay. I watched it again today because Leah wanted to see it. She had to go to bed early last night because it's school night. <laughs> so I had. she said she wanted to see it. She's a huge Bailey fan. I think because of the colors. and the, You know what I mean? Probably Bailey's so. happy. Bailey's happy. And that's how Lynn is. Like, Sasha Banks talk too much stuff for Lynn. Lynn don't like people who talk stuff. You know, so, that is a great trait to have. I like that. I'm glad she has that trait in life. Because I'm telling you, some people. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to throw that in there. Okay, go ahead. But, and it was cool. Like, And I was very proud to watch it with her because... I think this is how women's wrestling should be presented. Right? Uh, it was a rough match. It, it was some brutality. I mean, that finish was kind of... I was like, I she got kicked in the face, did she? Yeah. But they, they worked it out. They figured it out. They, they worked through all their tough spots. Uh, the crowd was in it the whole way through. And when you looked up on the stage, it was a sellout. Everybody from the back room was out there on the stage. Exactly. Uh, huge main event. If you look down that first row, it was Stephanie McMahon, Becky Lynch, Charlotte, and Lita. Lita's huge because Lita, I think she's going to take a full-time job with the WWE, probably as a trainer or somebody working down at NXT. Right. But understand, Keith, she made a minute raw with Trish Stratus. Like, 
she was like the last diva with like the the vision was really elevated. Exactly. But it never they never made it into pay per view, so this was like next level for them. Which I like thought this, was pretty awesome. This is made attraction. This is Ronda Rousey UFC, and they delivered. And it was hard to deliver and capitalize on the match they had at NXT in Brooklyn. They had another match of the night. Clear cut. Nobody's close. And I love the story they told. Love the story they told. Bailey was down 2-1. Down 1-0 for a long time. Then down 2-1. Very late in that match. You really questioned... Can she come back and win this? Exactly. And she was hurt. And the boss was on a roll. Right. You uh, know. It was, oh my God. It was, it was, <laughs> I had to sit in there breathing for a minute. Like, oh, is it? Is it going to happen? Ah. It challenges, people. Challenges. It's just, it's just a challenge in your head. It's just saying, like, it's, is this really gonna go down this way like no Bailey no I'm telling you it but I was, mm. Bailey gutted it out she got her falls and she got the last fall as time went out in the match to win it 3-2 like I said incredible story was told uh, the emotions was flowing like I told you I was a G so I didn't cry but it still touched me Translation, I might have cried a little bit. It's okay. Everybody else is crying. <laughs> they handed out roses. I thought that was really awesome at the end of the match. Uh, Sasha was definitely overcome with emotion. I see a lot of jokes putting around. Like, hey, she cried at her because you learned that you got to go to Raw full time now. But, you know, because I mean... These were ladies from developmental, but that didn't look like developmental match. No, no, it did not. It that didn't. was that was prime time, uh, and I think you know they they did that. No, I, I thought it was uh, incredible. Um, I definitely wouldn't even want to use the word developmental because it just doesn't do this match justice. Um, All right. You really don't even want to consider it to be in that same category. Like, it was something that I personally have never seen before. And I just thought that it was awesome. I Personally, I think there needs to be more repeats of this match. Uh, it definitely needs to be... This match, this match definitely needs to happen more and more often. Um, I personally just don't see why you wouldn't want to see this match over and over again. Not with them two, but just in general, as far as women's Iron Man matches and just women, a variety in women's matches in general. Because we don't see uh, a variety in women's matches in WWE nowadays. You know, it's like, uh, it. I guess with the idea of women shouldn't be as brutal, brutal or whatever, but it's kind of like, let them just wrestle, you know? I, I've i always been an advocate of just letting women wrestle. Like, just let them wrestle. Let them do what they do best. And let them do it in any way they see fit, you know? If they want to do a last man standing match, just let it happen, you know? Throw them in a cage if they want to go in a cage. I mean, just let them have a hardcore match if they want to do that. Like, just let them wrestle. Yeah, you know, I thought Tia, they did a good job with that kind of presentation. Yeah, like and, I love, that was the one thing I loved about the TNA knockouts was that they always wrestled in any vessel that they stalked it. They wrestled in matches that weren't even touched by the Divas of the WWE. Like it, it to me was what set them apart. They wrestled, right? Like, like that's always what I want to see. I just want to see a great wrestling match. I don't care what genders in the ring. Like that is just what I want to see. But I feel like at times the divas are held back because um, they're too busy trying to present them, you know, as women. Like 
and a sense of like pretty flashy, you know, just ah. That's why the Divas title has a big butterfly on it. Like that doesn't say right, tough. Right. You know, like right. that that doesn't say tough to me. I love the NXT Women's Championship belt. That says tough. That says I'm I'm the women's champion. I am the the cream of the crop of the females. Like that to me says I wrestle. The Divas title says to me like I'm pretty and I wear hair bows and I'm just awesome. No. <laughs> like it's a little I don't even want to get into the word degrading, but it's not. Like it's it is in a way. Um, I wouldn't say like it's horrific, but it is a slightly degrading. Like I'm gonna really need for them to change that and say one day in life. Like just somebody needs to come to their senses and just make that happen. But this was a step out the box and I'm gonna need for them to just destroy the box. Like just let it just be and let things like this happen more often. You know? Throw a chair in a match every once in a while. You don't even have to be and it's funny because now their uh, no DQ matches and everything aren't even as brutal as they used to be. Just throw them chair in a match every once in a while. The crowd will go crazy. Everybody will love it. It's not like it's a man against a woman. It's two women fighting each other. Like, they're the same gender. Just let them just have at it, you know? I digress. I'm going to stop. Let me get off my soapbox. I just, because I could go on this for days, right? This this is how passionate I get when I watch the women wrestle. Because it's just kind of, at times, I really just want to change the channel. Because it's just like, oh my God, this is so awful. Like, they're kind of like slapping at each other. Like, what is this? You know? Right. Even, I, I would compare it, because there have been comparisons at times to like, the evening gown matches and the pill fight matches and the jello matches and stuff like that. They used to have an attitude era. But I was like, in my in my defense of that, uh, those matches happened, but then there were wrestling matches. Like they had actual like women's wrestling matches where they actually wrestled. So and most and at times the women that participated in these other matches they were wrestlers. Like they were all wrestlers. At some at some point they were all wrestlers. They all got in the ring, they put on the gear, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, a good majority of them were. Some of them weren't. But that's just how it was. So I wouldn't even compare it to that because that it's not even the case. To me it's not even the same. So with that being said, like, I just think that they need to just go ahead and let this just be you know, just let it happen. Don't stop restricting them from what they could possibly do. This match just shows 10 times more potential and what could happen if you just let things be. You know, but I, God only knows when we'll see another match like this. So enjoy it, people. If you haven't watched it, go to the network. Turn it on. Even if you fast forward through the rest, I wouldn't suggest fast forward through the rest to take over respect. But if you do, fast forward to the end, watch the last 30 minutes, you won't be disappointed. I'm done. I think I'm done. I should be done. <sighs> I think I said it. All right. <laughs> With that, I can't do no better. With that, we out, man. We'll see y'all next week. Uh, we've got to wait a whole week maybe and I, I I gotta work Sunday so I don't think I'll be doing any podcast only thing that can happen is Monday after New Japan I feel the need to talk about it so <laughs> other than that um, I'm out so everybody see y'all later bye here in the interview area Jake the Snake Robert Jake I don't believe what I'm hearing I know what I saw in the Big Apple and boy, he really worked you over, and it, he, he is angry. You, you went right to the top. You went to your first big main event and dropped him on the concrete. Why'd you do that? Why did I do that? Yeah. Money. Oh, money. I understand. Impressing people. Intimidating people. That has always been my game. Steamboat has got to think. You know, I know he's enraged, and I know he's upset. But you see, when a man's upset, he can't do his best. Why? Because he doesn't think. And Steamboat right now, he's not thinking. I'm telling you that. I'm telling you, the man is not thinking. 
You know, there are 60 seconds in every minute. 60 minutes in every hour. That's right. And in 24 hours, that's 86,400 seconds per day. That's great arithmetic. That is good. Yeah. Over a half million seconds per week. And you know you spend a long time getting to the top. Working hard. And Steamboat's worked hard. There's not a finer athlete in the sport today than Ricky Steamboat. But you're not thinking. And the reason I say he's not thinking is that he's coming back out with his revenge in his heart. Well, he whipped your butt in New York City. Did he? Did he? That's well, one I way of looking it. at it. That's right. one way. You know, it depends on what side the fence you're on. See, I give a little, but I take a lot, Steamboat. You're not going to back me up. Because I'm here to stay, my man, because I can do exactly what I want to do. Now, you watch Saturday Night Live. You see the way the man went to the concrete, and you did not see him get up. Nobody has ever gotten up from the DDT. Nobody ever will. Explain that DDT. Mm -hmm. It's simply awesome. The end. DDT was a poison that was outlawed by the government several years ago because of the humanoids of the world were out there eating the plants that they were spraying and it was causing brain damage. Much the same as the DDT that I apply. It does cause brain damage, Steamboat. And my man, you will be brain dead if you continue this idiotic chase for revenge because before it's over, you will see shadows and darkness. And in the light, all of his fears. What are you going to do to him with the snake? People ask me a lot about that snake. They say, well, why do you put the snake on a guy uh, like that? Yeah. You want the honest guy? Yeah, to I do. Because I get off on it. Because I enjoy it. And that's all that matters. Well, we'll be right back and we're going to see what happens, Jake the Snake. <laughs> a lot's going to happen.